Outside in the garden, at that very moment, Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker had just taken their places at the front gate, each with a bunch of tickets in her hand, and the first stream of early morning sightseers was visible in the distance, climbing up the hill to view the peach. We shall like a fortune today, Aunt Spiker was saying. Just look at all those people. I wonder what became of that horrid little boy of ours last night, Aunt Sponge said. He never did come back in, did he? He probably fell down in the dark and broke his leg, Aunt Spiker said. Or his neck, maybe, Aunt Sponge said hopefully. Just wait until I get my hands on him, Aunt Spiker said, waving her cane. He'll never want to stay out all night again by the time I've finished with him. Good gracious me, what that, what's that awful noise? Both women swung around to look. The noise, of course, had been caused by the giant peach crashing through the fence that surrounded it, and now, gathering speed every second, it came rolling across the garden toward the place where Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker were standing. They gapped. They screamed. They started to run. They panicked. They both got in each other's way. They began pushing and jostling, and each one of them was thinking only about saving herself. Aunt Sponge, the fat one, tripped over a box she thought She'd brought along to keep the money in and fell flat on her face. Aunt Spiker immediately tripped over Aunt Sponge and came down on top of her. They both lay on the ground, fighting and clawing and yelling and struggling frantically to get up again. But before they could do this, the mighty peach was upon them. There was a crunch. And there was a silence. The peach rolled on, and behind it, Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker lay ironed upon the grass as flat and thin and lifeless as a couple of paper dolls cut out of a picture book. Chapter 16 And now the peach had broken out of the garden and was over the edge of the hill, rolling and bouncing down the steep slope at a terrible, terrific pace. Faster and faster and faster it went, and the crowds of people who were climbing up the hill suddenly caught sight of this terrible monster plunging down upon them, and they screamed and scattered to the right and left as it went hurling by. At the bottom of the hill, it charged across the road, knocking over a telegraph pole and flattening two parked automobiles as it went by. Then it rushed madly across about twenty fields, breaking down all the fences and hedges in its path. It went right through the middle of a herd of of fine Jersey cows, and then through a flock of sheep, and then through a padlock full of horses, and then through a yard of pigs, and soon the whole countryside was seething mass was a seething mass of panic-stricken animals stampeding in all directions. The peach was still going at a tremendous speed with no sign of slowing down, and about a mile further farther on it came to a village. Down the main street of the village it rolled with people leaping frantically out of its path right and left, and at the end of the street it went crashing right through the wall of an enormous building and out of the other side, leaving two gaping round holes in the brickwork. This building happened to be a famous factory where they made chocolate, and almost at once a great river of warm, melted chocolate came pouring out of the holes in the factory wall. A minute later, this brown sticky mess was flowing through every street in the village, oozing under the doors of houses and into people's shops and gardens. Children were wading in it up to their knees, and some were even trying to swim in it. And all of them were sucking it into their mouths in great gritty gulps and shrieking with joy. But the peach rushed on across the countryside, on and on and on, leaving a trail of destruction in its wake. Cow sheds, stables, pigsties, barns, bungalows, hay hay ricks, anything that got in its way went toppling over like a nine pin. An old man sitting quietly beside a stream had his fishing rod whisked out of his hands as it went dashing by, and a woman called Daisy Ant Whistle was, still, was standing so close to it as it passed and she had the skin taken off the tip of her long nose. Would it ever stop? Why should it? Around Audra, Audra, a round object will always keep on rolling as long as it's on a downhill slope, and in this case the land sloped downhill all the way until it reached the ocean, the same ocean that James had, James had begged his aunts to be allowed to visit the day before. Well, perhaps he was going to visit it now. The peach was rushing closer and closer to it every second, and closer also to the towering white cliffs that came first. These cliffs are the most famous in the whole of England, and they were hundreds of feet high. Below them, the sea is deep and cold and hungry. Many ships have been swallowed up and lost forever on this part of the coast, and all the men who were in them as well. The peach was now only a hundred yards away from the cliff, now fifty, 
now 20, now 10, now 5. And when it reached the edge of the cliff, it seemed to leap up into the sky and hang there suspended for a few seconds, still turning over and over in the air. Then it began to fall down, 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 down. Smack! It hit the water with a colossal splash and sank like a stone. But a few seconds later, it came up again, and this time up it stayed, floating serenely upon the surface of the water.